Hi, my name is Jeff and I'm a marketing lecturer at the University of Sydney. In this video I'm going to show you how we calculate customer lifetime value in a step-by-step -step manner. So in this case we've calculated down here customer lifetime value to be $583. So how does that happen? Okay, for this example I've used uh, acquisition cost of $250 all of these numbers are on a per customer basis and then revenue of those customers who are retained across the next 10 years okay so the first year we have a customer it's $500 and it increases $50 a year till by the end of year 10 we have a revenue of an active and still existing customer of $950 what does it cost us to provide that product and services to make that $500 in year one. I've just set that at, at half, so a gross margin of 50%. So as revenues increase, so does average costs. Okay, and then we just calculate the difference between those. Once we have uh, those pieces of numbers, we can then work out okay, what is the profit per year um, per each customer. So obviously that is increasing. Now that assumes we have a customer. In this case, we're looking at how many customers remain loyal, uh, remain with the company or the brand for the following year. In this case, I've set it at 75%. So in the first year, we, we gain the new customers, so we have 100% of those. The second year, 75% of them remain loyal. In the third year, that drops to 56%. And all I'm doing here in the calculation is reducing 75% by 70, taking 75% of it. And then 75% of 56% is 42. So which year I'm assuming that only 75% of the customers we have carry over. As a result, that number keeps reducing. And as you can see by, by year 10, we have less than 10% of customers. And even at a 75% a retention rate, by year six, we only have a quarter of the customers that we started with. This is an important number because this number of retention says, okay, what is the probability of the cash flow in the future? So let's take year five. Okay, so we've got 700 in revenue, 330 in costs, 330 in profit also. But this retention rate means that only 32% of the customers we take on five years earlier will stay, still remain customers. That means we only have a 32% probability of receiving that uh, profit stream. Okay, in reality, we'll get it $350 from 32% of customers and zero from the other uh, 68. Okay, so when we factor that in mind, the profit contribution of the customers that actually we actually keep it's not $350; it's only $111. So as you can see, this reduces over time. In this case, in this application, I'm using a, a discount rate uh, of 10%. Basically, what I'm trying to do is prove that the profitability of a customer is greater than 10%. Okay, so we've got some revenues right out here. So how valuable are they? Given the company today could take the $250 or lots of it, uh, instead of instead of acquiring new customers, it could spend that money on somewhere else. So therefore, is the $250 going to exceed more than a 10% return? And to do that, what I do is I start off at, at 1 and I multiply um, each number by 10%. So obviously I've just added 10% there. So the next one is 10% extra on that, which ramps up a little bit. So this is like a compounding interest. So compounding 10%. As we know, at 10% uh, compounding, it roughly doubles after seven years. So uh, there we are. And by year 10, um, $36, instead of being $36, is only worth $14 after we apply the discount, which is 36 divided by that amount. Now, the reason that happens is that if we invested $36 uh, sorry, if we invested $14 today, in 10 years' time, it'll be worth 
uh, $36. Okay, so having $36 in year 10 is the same as having $14 today. So that's why it's uh, accounted for that way. So obviously as we get further out, you can see that these discount numbers become quite aggressive. And the, the amount of profitability that feeds into the end customer lifetime value is quite small. The majority of the of the customer lifetime value is actually recouped in the early years. Okay, we finally get to a, a $583 mark. Okay, but you can see here if I just take the first um, let's say the first five years, you know, we're pretty well, you know, got a lot of that money already. Okay, once we get past the next five years plus. Um, we're only getting fairly small amounts of revenue or profit adding to the customer lifetime value. That happens for two reasons. One, as you can hear, see here, the retention, the likelihood or the probability of that, that profit or that revenue coming to us is reducing because customers are leaving. So yeah, if we have a customer, yeah, we could get $950, but we're only going to have 8% of those. Uh, 950 uh, revenue and 475 profit, but only having 8% of those. So 8% of that is one in one in 12 people are going to still be a customer, and out of those one in 12, that works out to $36. And because it's so far in the future, it only works out that its equivalent, its present value, is only $14. What we have down here is just the running total. So we lose or invest $250. In the first year in acquisition, the second year, okay, we're taking in $227. So we've got a profit coming in and a slight discount being applied at 10%, um, which means we recouped most of our, our profit, uh, our, most of our acquisition costs. We become profitable, so we achieve payback early in year two. Okay, and all we do is add the discounted profit which is also accounted for by likelihood or probability of, of money returning. So that's how the calculation works. If you want to know more about customer lifetime value, uh, click on the link below.